Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm one of the CAM application specialists here at Hawker Systems. And in this video, we'll be talking about refining your automatic feature recognition. Inside of CAMWorks, we have the automatic feature recognition and the intelligence-based machining. Essentially, it will recognize the features first and then apply operational strategies. Now, what we're going to cover in this video are options to refine that recognition to a point that it actually feeds more appropriate, more logical geometry into that intelligence-based machining into operations that we would actually apply to a part from more of a machinist point of view. So let's take a look at the default install and how it recognizes the features on this part. If we take a look at this first pocket up here, the way it was recognized is as an irregular slot. Now, essentially, a slot inside of CAMWorks is any pocket or any cavity that has an open edge. And you can see that from these dotted lines in the corners, it has recognized that the interface of those drilled holes with the pocket counts as an open edge. It thinks of it as a slot. But this isn't actually the way that I would, would have machined it. I would look at it as a pocket first, and then those holes as a separate feature to be drilled. And you can see that CamWorks is also recognizing that as features to be drilled. But that irregular slot would throw off the intelligence-based machining. It would throw off the type of operations that would apply to that, that feature there. So with this one in particular, the way we can refine that is with the simplify features options. So I'm going to go into my programming options here. And in addition to the feature types checklist, I also have this option in the bottom right corner where I can add simplify features. Essentially, what that will do now is if I re-recognize my part, we can see now that we have a rectangular pocket instead of the slot. This is how I would actually have viewed this myself and apply operations to it. So basically, if we take a look at it now, it now recognizes that these walls meet at a sharp corner, which means now that in my operational strategy, I can properly apply my rest machining. I don't have any open edges that the tool is going to try and cross those lines. It's a little more of a logical way to machine this part. And in addition, it still has the drilled holes. So those are two separate features generating two separate operation plans with a little more of a, of a logical view at how we would machine this. Let's take a look at another option. Now, if we take a look at this feature here, this was actually recognized as an irregular pocket and a rectangular pocket. But if you take a look at the depths, this is not actually the way that I would have want, wanted this to be recognized. The irregular pocket is actually the entire top level down to this Z level right here. So including the top portion of this pocket. And then this rectangular pocket starts from that depth and goes down. This is not the way I would want this to be machined. I probably would machine this as a pocket going all the way up to the top of the part. And I would like this to be machined as if it's a slot taking advantage of this open edge. So the way to address that would be another option in my options list called recognize features by depth. Essentially what this will do now when I run my extract machinable features, it will recognize those as two separate features still, but one as the slot, and in this case, a rectangular slot, again, giving me advantages in terms of my intelligence-based machining. I can use rectangular-based operations on that, and it recognizes the open edge, whereas the other one is now extended all the way to the top. So if the differences in these depths somehow I could take advantage of in terms of using volume mill, for instance. I now have the ability here to still recognize them as two separate features, but with more of a logical point of view as to the, the items related to depths or open edges, that sort of thing. Again, yielding more accurate, more logical geometry to my intelligence-based machining, my operational strategies. And then lastly, we have the final feature on my part where it is a slot, but the walls are tapered walls. There's a draft angle on each of those walls, but that is not a continuous taper. The two walls on either side have a seven degree taper and the wall on the back has a 10 degree taper. You'll notice that it was not recognized at all in my feature tree. Because of that non-uniform taper, it doesn't think of that as a slot with tapered walls. It thinks of it as a 3D feature. But I am using a simple mill. I have two and a half axis operations. I'd like to address at least some of that with my two and a half axis functionality. So I'll go back to the options and I'll turn on the last feature of non-uniform chamfer, fillet, and taper. Basically, that will take advantage of the fact that we're still looking at the volume 
of our part. We're looking at the cavity that is formed by this feature. Let's see what we can extract at minimum to be able to machine this with our two and a half axis operations. So again, I'll just do extract machinable features. And we should see now we have this irregular slot. Now, essentially, all this feature represents is the main cavity, the main void of this feature. I can now add any kind of pocketing operations in here, rough, rest, rough, and finish to machine out the bulk of that area. And then those drafted walls, then I can address those with some sort of 3D operation or maybe using a, um, an open profile or something to that effect to individually machine the walls. But what we're getting here is a little further along in our programming by recognizing the oddball shape of this particular feature. So essentially, in your options tab, you have the non-whole features options, which give you further refinements, further ways to recognize your features on, on your part, but with more of an eye towards simplification, but also the logic of how we would machine these things. So you can see here that this would uh, move you along a little further along in your programming, and it's a little more in line with how we would actually apply our operations. Any questions of this or anything else, give us a call at the phone number found on our website, and stay tuned to the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.